Hi, my name is Jennifer Piltworth and I'm the gallery director here at the Field Gallery on Martha's Vineyard. Today we are going to be talking with Jennifer Christie, Susie White, and Rachel Cassiani, three female artists who are going to be kicking off our 2020 um, artist reception summer season. We're doing things a little bit differently this year. We're not having large gatherings. So instead we're having a nice intimate chat and feel free to check out their work on our website at www.fieldgallery.com. Again, it's Rachel Cassiani, Jennifer Christie, and Susie White. Thanks, enjoy. Hi, Jen. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Hi. Oh, is, hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi. Nice Hello. You. <laughs> awesome, so should we just jump right in? So, um, so Susie, what is your background, your education, and what brought you to Martha's Vineyard? Um, well, that's a whole, that's a whole bunch of things. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, so I, I, I grew up in Chicago, in downtown Chicago, and uh, that has some significance for me just because I think it's where um, I sort of got my built-in sense of, of place. I grew up on a tree-lined street, very narrow, um, so that's kind of my comfort zone. I like being surrounded by trees and um, having that closeness. I find myself very sort of disoriented in the <laughs> desert kind of thing. Um, so, uh, so anyway, um, yeah, and the architecture, I think, also just, you know, sort of helped make me who I am and the way that I see things. Um, and then I spent some time in Indiana. My parents got divorced, so I, I lived in a very rural setting, um, which also sort of opened my um, my eyes to just another, yet another. So uh, all by way of saying that a lot of my work has to do with sense of place and connection to those places. Um, with my now husband, we did an around the world trip after college, um, but he was the one who first brought me here. Um, I couldn't be happier. Nice, nice. Yeah. And um, so Rachel, what is your favorite thing to do on the vineyard and where is your favorite place? Uh, my favorite thing to do would have to be just being on the beach in general in any way, shape or form. Um, whether it's water sports, sunsets, uh, extensive hikes, it's where I get pretty much all of my inspiration. My work always has a body of water in it. So if I'm gonna be anywhere, it's gonna be on the shore. So that's my favorite thing to do. And my favorite place would have to be the Equinoclips. Um, just everything about it, the bold colors, the contrast, the structural forms, I think they play off really well in my work. And it's always been a really special place to me too, because my mom used to take me and my siblings there when I was a kid. So I have really good memories of just everything about the Aquiniclyphs. So it's very special to me. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. um, Jen, what is it like being an artist? The funny thing is the first thing I thought of was, um, it just means being me. And I, I don't, I rarely think of myself as an artist, you know, I just think of me being me. And this is like one of the things I've got to do, like speaking or moving or eating. And, um, and I feel like it, I was an art teacher for a long time. I, I, I still feel really strongly that everyone could sort of develop their, their voice, their art voice, you know. Or what it is and, and be an artist. I think we all I have this very optimistic view that we all have this potential and um, happens to come out in a visual way for me but some people with some musical instrument or dance or some kind of movement or voice or whatever and so it's really just like an artist being an artist means being more fully myself I would say. Nice. Um Susie, uh, sort of staying on that same note, what is the biggest personal reward that you get from being an artist? Um, well, I echo a lot of what Jennifer had to say there. I mean, it, it, I get to be me and I get to spend every day in my studio playing with materials and, paint and thinking about things and spending time, you know, walking through the woods, running through the woods, walking on the beach and um, having time to sort of process and let all of that, you know, come into my head and distill and then come back out again. And I, I consider myself incredibly 
um, yeah, I consider myself incredibly lucky to be able to spend my days making artwork. And the reward is when people choose to, you know, live with my work. I, I just think that's a, an amazing thing that other people can connect to some something that basically that I've felt and been said through a painting. It's pretty great. How about you, Rachel? What is your biggest personal reward? I think mine would have to be that painting for me is a form of therapy. I've always used it as a form of therapy. Um, when I'm feeling really stressed and having a troublesome week or anything going on in my life, when I go into my studio and I start painting, everything just kind of lifts away. And I've had a lot of people tell me that my work makes them feel calm and happy. Um, so for me to be able to kind of transfer that vibe that I'm getting just through making them into what my clients and viewers buy is just really special to me. Susie, who are your biggest uh, influences? Oh, Mother Nature is my biggest influence. <laughs> um, for sure. I mean, I also love looking at other artists um, and designers and, and just um, you know, seeing how other people put things together, um, but for sure nature. I mean, I'm just constantly, I'm stunned at the, the, the patterns, like in, in the winter, uh, especially, I find, you know, just the, uh, the ice that gets created in the little, uh, you know, in the little potholes up and down the street. I, it's just it, mind boggling to me how it can just change so much from day to day. And I'm in awe and, you know, hope that that comes through in, in what I do. But yeah, that's my biggest influence. <laughs> How about you, Jenny? What's, what are some of your biggest influences? Yeah, um, you know, I, I feel like with my artwork, I don't have, um, I don't really have like a real direct influence from certain artists. I mean, certainly when I was younger um, and doing a lot more studying of art, um, being involved in, in school and in graduate school, I was really, you know, influenced by people who were making art at that time, um, particularly women artists. Um, I'm very saddened about Susan Rothenberg um, recently. She was a really somebody I, I um, if I if I needed to just sort of like sit down with a, with something, I often sat down with her paintings um, for some reason um, and. And then other people, like a person who was really big on the scene when I was in um, college and graduate school was Kara Walker, who do these, who does these cutouts, um, and she has a she has a real um, message, and, and and there's politics in her in her work, but but for me it was just like this this interesting treatment of negative space and and. Um, but it has nothing, it really doesn't seem to be connected to my work at all, these people. And I think it was mostly that, that I had a real connection to them at the time. And when I was really making um, a lot of art and learning about it. And, and um, so my influences really are just like the wider world and being a really, training myself to be a good observer of things, of the natural world, of, of other art forms, of practicing, having a practice of being open to uh, what's going on around me. And I think that's the biggest influence. Great. Um, Rachel, what is the coolest thing that you learned today or lately? <laughs> um, I've been working on a series of figure studies, which is new to me. Um, I kind of blocked down the human form into blocks and cubes, similar to my landscapes. And I have always wanted to do it, but never really had the time and quarantine kind of came and gave me that extra time. So it's been a fun challenge and I'm really loving them. Awesome. What about you, Jen? What was the, what's the coolest thing that you've learned lately? Well, I was thinking about that, um, and you know, I live my life, at least currently, and for a little while longer, with three teenagers, and and we have a small house, and we're always, you know, having meals together, and and you know, I feel like the things that I'm learning all the time are from them. Like we're we're sitting at dinner, and we're just talking about all these issues and all the, the current issues that are 
that are happening. Um, and I just feel like I learn, maybe not the coolest things from them, but I just learn so much from them. Um, I'm really going to feel like I need to go out more if I, when they leave. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and it feels like it's a sort of quarantine, especially doing something like this with, with Zoom. Like, when have we had a chance, the four of us, to sit down and just right. talk about being an artist and making work? And so there's something sort of wonderful, trying to see the yeah. silver lining. <laughs> um, and I think your work, you know, it's, it's interesting that for me, the three of you, your work is really very tied in together. Though, you know, when once we sort of see the 3D, you know, view of your show, I think there's no way that you would ever confuse each other. The work is very, all of your work is very, very distinct, very different styles, but there does seem to be sort of an underlying thread that ties yeah. you all together. Absolutely. Interesting. I think your work aims to say. <laughs> um, this is an interesting one. I mean, I think, um, I don't have, you know, huge messages for my work other than I'm often thinking about, you know, sort of something in particular. And this most current body of work, I was thinking a lot about connection. Um, and I started working on the show sort of back in, I don't know, September, October, you know, just thinking about things. And I was just thinking a lot about the connections that I have to various people and places, you know, throughout my life and the impact that those have had. And, Sort of the personal connections, but then also connections at a, on, a, on a bigger level, like natural connections <clears throat> versus per personal connections. Um, and, you know, all, all these different sort of systems from mycelium feeding resources from the forest to, you know, a neural network to your nervous system to, you know, internet, you know, just connection in so many different ways. Um, so I, I, that's just been something that I have been thinking about and looking at in my own personal life and the connections that I have. Nice. Do you, Rachel, do you feel like you have sort of a, um, something that you're aiming to say with your work? Probably, I think my vibrancy and the brightness and the boldness is to just be happy. Like a lot of it is to feel calm and happy. And like I said, I use it to feel that way because a lot of the times I don't. And I don't think you'd think that looking at my work because it is so bright and cheery. Um, so yeah, that's kind of with that. Nice. Um, on a fun note, I want to sort of leave with a just random question of, um, and I'll start with you, Jenny, and then we'll go, what if you could have one food that you would eat forever or drink, what would it be? <laughs> well, gosh, I couldn't, I couldn't choose this, this question originally because I needed to have like, you know, seasonal things, and stuff, right. but I'll just go, oh, I, I'm just, I, I can't think strawberry, I'll, okay. strawberry for sure. It's fresh fries <laughs> has to be like right from the garden. <laughs> nice. Rachel, what would yours be? Oh, hands down potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm I'm gluten free, so I mean you can have potatoes in any way. I mean French fries, potato chips, baked potato. I the list goes on. So right. I would be set for a very long time. <laughs> Susie, what would be your choice for? Wow, now I'm kind of envious about the whole potato thing. They are very <laughs> versatile, right? Um, I was gonna go with an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I have a sweet tooth, but, you know, there's some oats in there and, yeah. you know, some eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Balanced meal. Yes, yes exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been fun. Thank you for yes. joining me. Yeah. Uh, hopefully Thank we'll you. get to see you again. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Anyway. So Great. All right. I will sign off. Okay. Bye, guys.